we were asked to prepare a summary on what was the principal's decision about the court case that a boy at school had sued against him because a boy named Nicholas Boroff, which I think his last name is, um, wore a Mar Marilyn Manson shirt to school containing a picture of Jesus and the um, phrases on it that principals didn't think were appropriate, which was, see no truth, hear no truth, speak no truth. The principal told him that he was either to wear it inside out or he was to go home. Four days after that, the boy wore similar shirts to school. And because of this, the principal sent him home and didn't give him credit for the days he was present. So the mother of the boy, the child, sued the principal because he thought he was violating his First Amendment rights. And the federal court ruled in favor of the principal because they thought that he had his right in punishing the child for whichever material he thought was unfair for the school and unlawful. So basically, the moral of the story is the principal basically just, he violated the boy's rights by having a free expression of what he wanted to wear of expressing himself in school. Um, read the question out. What reason did the court say for upholding the principal's decision to ban the t-shirt? They didn't have a right, really. They just thought it was offensive and having to do with religion, and not everyone's Christian, so I don't think it was really fair that he got in trouble for wearing something that he personally believed in, and the principal didn't, or did. The principal found it offensive to the other students in the school, so he wouldn't let him wear the t-shirt. We were also asked if we agree with the court's decision. No, we do not agree with the court's decision. It is violating his rights because we still wear shirts like this to school. This is something that is not right and should be taken to a higher level than just that. I mean, we still wear shirts like this today, and he had a right to wear that shirt because we have people in school wearing, like, no offense to anybody here, but like if you're in gangs, you have stuff with gangs. You have stuff with bands that say rude things. People wear stuff with guns on them. And nobody's getting in trouble for it now, so I don't see what the point was with this. Well, the court, if you read the panel. You know, and that's great. I mean, it's good that you feel passionate about it. That's important. Um, what the, what the, this is very awkward. What the, um, <laughs> What the court came out on the side of the, of the teacher for was that they decided that the, the uh, primary purpose of a school is to educate. And anything that interferes, such as a distractive t-shirt, um, anything that interferes with that number one goal of the school to provide education, the principal and the school board or the school administrators can regulate. Um, you know, how many of you have a dress code in your school? How many people feel like it's followed pretty, pretty much to the letter? Mm -hmm. Sometimes kind of. teachers be wearing really good ones. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you follow the most recent ruling of the U.S. Supreme Court um, about the, the bong hits for Jesus case where the, the, where the uh, kid had on the t-shirt outside of school? How many of you followed that? There was a case a few years ago when the Olympic procession came to this boy's town. Um, the school went out to watch it. They were on a public sidewalk. It wasn't a t-shirt, actually. It was a banner he, he put up that said, Bong hits for Jesus. Silly statement. He was just doing it, you know, just because, just to be silly. And his, and his principal, they went through the same thing. He was punished for it. Went to court on a First Amendment violation. And it made its way all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court and sided with the school um, because it was a drug-related message. So how many of you think that your First Amendment rights are now being challenged the minute you walk into school? <laughs> if you want, you want to go to school and you want to feel comfortable, if they're gonna, if you have people wearing things that are offensive to you, you're not gonna appreciate that. School is, like you said, for education, and people.
people can express themselves outside of school in public places. How many of you correlate it to a safety issue? I want to go to school and feel safe, and I don't want people to feel like they can do or say anything while I'm in school. Mm -hmm. Not with my hand t-shirts, but... Well, but um, I think that not only is the primary job of the school is education, it's developing, it's helping you develop the way you think and making you think outside the box. So if someone comes to school with a different opinion than me, I would think that's interesting and it wouldn't distract me at all. Yeah. Me personally, I think you should be able to wear whatever you want to wear. Whatever you want to wear. Right. As long as you're getting a free education, it's cool. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. Just like we have the freedom to wear whatever we want, um, to some extent, the people who run the school have the freedom to for, of establishment, and they have the right to set the rules for their establishment because, I mean, they're kind of the workers of it. So, I mean, whatever they don't feel comfortable with in their establishment, I think that they should be allowed to set the rules for, you know, their for building. Their, for their place, for their staff, even, yeah. though, even though it's a public school. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is obviously a topic that people come down strongly on. Glad it's good, though. I mean, you should be thinking about these things. The courts, not only here in Ohio, but at the, at the federal level, make decisions all the time that affect your everyday life. And you need to be aware of that and, and keep in the loop on those things. Don't think that it doesn't matter just because I'm a teenager. Um, it does matter. All right. Ours was about a teenager that used hair curlers, and she followed every all the directions on the box. And once she took out the curlers, her hair fell out. She sued the manufacturing company because she said it was unsafe, and the manufacturing company ad advertised it as being a safe and effective product, and it wasn't. So. And. The Supreme Court ruled that this, they advertised it as a safe project, product, even though it wasn't. And the impact that the kid made on the consumer protection is the warning labels, and they made extra tests. Um, one of the questions on here was, name a specific product that you found reliable and why. Um, one of the things we um, said was Crest whitening strips or whatever, because I guess we tried it and it worked. And then it says, what ads are not reliable and why? We said hair products that didn't work. Because, I mean, personally, I went through that. Um, exercise equipment, um, elections, because they do, do anything to win, sell products, all for money. Good. Did you hear her, her responses about what ads they, that you don't find reliable? I like the ones that they chose, exercise equipment and campaign ads. So any other thoughts on that about false advertising? It was good. This is an interesting case in that, I mean, it's an older case. And, um, you know, prior to this, can you guys, do any of you want to share with them what the, uh, what the trial court ruled? Before it came here, somebody else was being held responsible for this product being faulty. Who was it? The court of... The court, but the court of appeals, they, I don't know. The retailer, they wanted, the, the, the reasoning was is that, you know, it wasn't the manufacturer's fault. I mean, today, we live and die by the warning label. There's warning labels on all kinds of products that sometimes are almost borderline silly. But prior to this case, there was not a lot of responsibility taken by the manufacturer. This is a big consumer protection case. Um, yeah. Can we have a question? Did her hair ever grow back? <laughs> I don't, you know, I really don't know. I'm going to assume it did. Um, it's, let's hope that it did. It was just, you know, just chemical damage from a home perm. It probably grew back. So, all right. Good job, guys.